BS Abdul Rahman University, earlier known as BS Abdul Rahman Crescent Engineering College. Uh, this is Subramanian from Department of Mechanical Engineering, Crescent University. In today's lecture, we will be discussing some important topics in the subject kinematics of machinery. The contents for this today's session will be like this. So, we will start with what are planar mechanisms. We will have some important discussions in degrees of freedom and what are the equations and how we can find degrees of freedom for a given mechanism will be discussed in this topic and in the same equation we will find out how this equation cannot be considered as an universal equation for finding the degrees of freedom that is exceptions in Gruber's criterion and the last topic we will discuss about the inversions of a given forward mechanism. So, let us discuss one by one. What are planar mechanisms? Say when all links are connected in a single plane and all the links are say parallel to a particular plane that mechanism is termed as a planar mechanism. Say for instance, when I have four links like this as I am showing here, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the four links, these are parallel to the vertical plane. So, this mechanism when I hold one of the links is called as a planar mechanism. So, we, there are some other mechanisms as well. So, when I say planar mechanism, there are spatial mechanisms too. How do we say a spatial mechanism? for a pick and place robot means it may be a series of chain in which I will use one of the links of a robot to pick from one position to another position where it will be using all the three axes x, y and z. In that case we term it as a spatial mechanism. In that case all the links may not be parallel to one plane, one particular plane we may be using all the x, y and z planes. So, in that case that is called as a spatial mechanism. So, in planar mechanisms we will discuss what is uh, degrees of freedom. It is a very important terminology in the kinematics. What is degrees of freedom? Before discussing this, let us have a thought of drawing a simple square. <coughs> so, I am asking to draw a simple square means what are the things we need to have as an input? We need to know the dimension of one particular side and we already know that all the sides are equal and in addition to that we know that there is a angle which will be 90 degrees, all the four sides and two sides will be having 90 degrees, all the adjacent sides will be having 90 degrees. The same case I am extending it that if I ask to draw a quadrilateral means four different sides. In that case, we, it is not only sufficient that we have the link lens, but also we need to have at least one particular angle, one particular angle to position or draw the configuration of a quadrilateral. Say for instance, I need to have a mechanism like this. So, for this, I will be getting, I will be, I need to know the link lens of say 1, 2, 3 and 4. In addition to this, if I need to draw like this, I need to know one particular angle. So, the independent scalar component which need to draw or which is required to position the particular mechanism is known as a degrees of freedom. In other words, it is the number of inputs that is, is, that is required to describe the configuration of all the positions of the links is termed as a degrees of freedom. What is Gruber's criterion? Say, I need to find out the degrees of freedom for this mechanism. Before I need to find out the degrees of mechanism of this, let us understand what is the degrees of freedom for a planar mechanism for a link in an xy plane. Let me assume that this is one single link and this is going to be a vertical plane, this is, this is the vertical axis, this is y and this is x, I have a link like this. 
what are the possible motions for this particular link? What are the possible motions? We need to understand that it can either move linear in x axis or it can move vertical with respect to y axis or it may rotate with respect to the z axis. So, it is possible that it is therefore, it is concluded that it can have only three possible rotations that is two linear and one particular rotation. So, maximum it may have 3 degrees of freedom. This is for a link positioned in a plane. The same case when I connect these two links together, this forms a pair. In that case, if I fix one of the links, independently it may have 3 degrees of freedom independently the another link will have 3 degrees of freedom. If I join this together and I fix one of this, I will be having only one rotation with respect to z axis. In other words, 2 degrees of freedom is lost when it is connected as a pair. When for this 4 bar mechanism, I have 4 links and I have again 4 pairs that is link number 1 and 2 forms a pair, 2 and 3 forms a pair, 3 and 4 forms a pair and 4 and 1 forms another pair. All are revolute pairs. When these two things that is these two links are connected and they are formed as a revolute pair, 2 degrees of freedom is lost. In 4 pairs, I have 8 degrees of freedom. I have lost 8 degrees of freedom. What is a mechanism? We say the definition for a mechanism is that at least one of the links need to be fixed in order to have a mechanism. When I fix one of these links, it means all the three possible motions of this particular chain is lost. So, how many degrees of freedom is lost when I connect it as a kinematic chain and I fix it? It means 8 plus 3 degrees of freedom is last. The same case is illustrated here in this equation. How did I get this? When n is the number of lengths and I have 3 into n is the total degrees of freedom and there are 4 pairs, all are revolute pairs, it means 4 into 2 and P2 is nothing but pairs with 2 degrees of freedom not only pairs with 1 degrees of freedom, there are pairs with 2 degrees of freedom. In, in spatial mechanism, there are pairs with 3, 4 and 5 degrees of freedom respectively. In this case, it means 3 into n minus 2 times that is 2 degrees of freedom is lost for a pair with 1 degree of freedom. It means 4 pairs are lost. So, 4 into 2, 8 is lost and minus 1 is nothing but minus 3 it is brought back in the bracket minus 3 to indicate that 3 degrees of freedom is lost when one of the link is fixed. So, this is the given condition or it is given an equation to find out the number of degrees of freedom for a mechanism. Here it is it is given as an indication as an abbreviation so that we will understand what it is. The same FOBO mechanism what I am showing here is given in the diagram where O2 and O4 forms a fixed link, 2, 3 and 4 are the other 3 links. So, what is the degrees of freedom for this given mechanism? One input to any one of the link will result in a definite motion of all the links. We will apply the same Gruber's criterion in this. 3 into n minus 1 minus 2 times p 1 minus p 2, where 3 into number of lengths is 4 minus 1 is going to be 3 into 3 is 9 minus 2 into 4 pairs it is going to be 8, 9 minus 8 is going to have 1 degrees of freedom. This is what is the understanding in the given diagram. Let it be a case of 5 lengths. So, in this case how many links are there and how many pairs are there. Let us start with this. So, the fixed link 
see the one it is denoted as one it is the fixed link number two three four and five where two is going to be the input link and five is going to be the output link let us see how many pairs are there in this particular mechanism one and two forms a pair a revolute pair number one two and three number two three and four number three four and five number four and one and five so on the whole we have we have one two three four five pairs so substituting in the equation three into five minus one minus two into number of pairs will get as two which means that two inputs are required for this mechanism it means it, it there is no possibility of a definite motion that is expected when the input motion is given in number 2 that is the understanding in this say in other words i have i need to draw a configuration like this how do how should i understand this for drawing this i need to have the link lens of all these things in addition to that i need to know two angles it means it's clearly indicated it is clearly evident that there are there are two degrees of freedom or it is a mechanism which is having two degrees of freedom let us have one more example in this say in this case it is in the previous examples we have seen there are only binary joints in this case we will see there are two ternary joints and the number of links is going to be starting with the fixed link 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 there are six links in this and there are two ternary joints 1 2 3 4 binary joints substituting in the equation in the gruber's criterion we will see that there are six links seven pairs how would i get seven let's see again this is one two three four five six and seven all are revolute pairs so this is a simple example for illustration that we have taken only revolute pairs if i take the number of pairs as seven substituting in the equation we get three into six minus one minus two into seven this is going to be 15 minus 14 it's going to be one it means one input to any one link will result in one definite motion of all other links that is what is the understanding we are getting through this example let's pause on to the next one what is the difference between the previous configuration and this configuration in this if you see one two three links are connected in one particular joint which means that we need to account for two particular pairs in the previous example we have seen in all the cases there are only two links connected two links form a pair but in this case you see that one two three links are connected here how should i account we need to account as two that is what is the difference we understand it is illustrated in the given equation the number of links is going to be six say one two three four five and this is a ternary joint it's going to have only six so we have six links again seven pairs how this is accounted for two as i told earlier this is one and two two so i start with the first pair one this is two three and four five and six seven so you have seven pairs two at the intersection of this two three four so when it, we substitute in this we get again this is going to be one degree of freedom so this is what is the gruber's criteria before we discuss this inversions of mechanism there are few things which need to be understood in this see in this case we have discussed that 3 into n minus 1 minus 2 p 1 minus p 2 is the equation used to find out the degrees of freedom can this be the 
equation for finding all degrees of freedom obviously not how let's see how let's take the example of one in the case the plane forms a link number one that is one two three four links are fitted in a series one two three links are fitted in the frame this is a ternary joint and one two three four five six are the pairs so we have six pairs we have this is the fixed link this is a one two three binary joint one ternary joint so substituting in the equation we get 3 into n minus 1 where n is going to be 5 minus 1 i am getting 5 minus 1 we have six pairs how do how six pairs link this fixed link and one this is number 2 this is number 3 3 4 5 6 so i have six pairs here when i substitute in this so i may not be getting any degrees of freedom it means this is going to form a structure it is very clearly evident it is used only to support loads even before making all this mechanism and the model i am very well able to predict that this is going to be a structure but come to the example here shown in two the same thing it is again the number of links number of pairs everything remained the same but what is the difference here it means except the type of arrangement these three links one two three links are parallel to each other in the previous case these two links are equal and this is shorter in length but in this case it is not so each of the links are parallel and you can very well see that there is one definite motion it means the it is having one degree of freedom if you compare this and this number of links is same number of pairs is the same but it is having one degrees of freedom so what is the understanding there are some exemptions in the given equation that is a very clear evidence on how should we determine then when the links are parallel there is a chance that it will have one degree of freedom. there are still some more examples which which is evident that gruber's equation cannot be universally accepted as a E as an equation to find the degrees of freedom this is the learning in this the next topic is going to be the inversion of a given four bar mechanism what is an inversion supposing i have an i have a mechanism so i should not change any of these links i have a i have a requirement that i should get different motions from the same mechanism is it possible the answer is yes it is possible it is possible that we could get different kinds of motions by fixing different lengths this is the definition for a inversion but how should we how can we get this what are the ways that we could get different kinds of motions for the same mechanism let's see in this example that this forms a four bar chain i am fixing link number 1 and i am rotating this this will form a crank and this motion is a rocker motion the output is going to have a rocker motion in second case i am fixing the next link so which will form a, a two crank motion so i'll have a complete crank here complete rotation here i'll have a complete rotation for this link complete rotation for this link means these two links will form a full 360 degree rotation means it is having a two crank then i have the other link fixed in either case i will not get a crank means none of the links will have 360 degrees rotation crank means a link should have 360 degrees rotation so how should or how can we understand that the same mechanism can be obtained same for the same mechanism how can we get different kinds of motions so inversion means we will get different motions but for the given mechanism i need to have two crank two rocker or a crank rocker mechanism how can we obtain this the answer is quite simple so 
in a four bore mechanism in order to have a full rotation for a particular link or one particular link at least for one link the sum of the shortest and the longest link the longest and the shortest link should be less than or equal to the sum of link lengths of the other two links say for instance it's going to be p and q this is going to be l and s s and l the sum of this s and l should be less than or equal to p plus q if it is going to be 130 it's 130 if it is going to be 80 means it should be at least 50 or more than 50 in only in this case i will get one full rotation this is called as a grassofian condition so how can i find out how can i obtain different kinds of motion for this if i fix the link adjacent to the shortest link either case it may be this link or this link say it's, if i name it as 1 2 3 and 4 if i fix either 1 or 3 in both the case i will get a crank rocker motion if I fix the shortest link, that is link number 2, I will get 2 crank motion. If I fix the link opposite to the shortest link, I will be getting 2 rocker motion. So, this is evident in the given diagram. If I fix the longest or the link adjacent to the shortest link, I will be getting a crank, a rocker. The same case is this, the link adjacent to the shortest link is fixed, I will get a crank, a rocker. In this case, the shortest link is fixed, I will be getting two crank motions and I am fixing the link opposite to the shortest, I will getting two rocker motions. So I sum up that we have discussed, initially we started discussing about the first thing, the planar mechanisms, then the degrees of freedom, we have discussed what are degrees of freedoms and we have seen few examples on this and later we have seen how Grashofian condition is being used for finding the degrees of freedom and later we concluded that this equation has certain exemptions and then we started discussing about inversions and finally how we obtain the inversions for uh, same four bar mechanism and what are the conditions in which we get different kinds of motions in the given four bar mechanism. Thank you.